Oh, let's have a hand for that band. <laughs> My golly, darn. You guys need oxygen? You bet yeah. pass out? Yeah. Supplemental. My gosh. Right That's the two old fossil bands. Yeah. yeah, I know. There you go. Hey, are we on? We're on. Hey, hey, everybody. I'm Jake Wizard 4. I'll say it again. I'm Jake Wizard 4. Yeah. Every time I say wizard here at Faraday Studio, the bells ring. Wizard, wizard, wizard. There you go. I don't know how that works, but it does. Hey, I want to welcome you to our, I guess this is the final award ceremony for our uh, search for the next science star. Wow. That competition went on with, with the uh, Science Olympiad this year. And we're bringing this award ceremony because we, the, the COVID thing, so we're doing this uh, safely distanced from each other, right? So don't get any closer to me. And stay away from bands anyway. They're, you know, with, with or without, is it easy? You want to do that? Yeah, I got you. So oh, where are we? We're at Faraday Studio. You might not know where that is at. Do we have some pictures of this place from where we're coming from? All that little background music. This place is, is, believe it or not, 200 years in the making. Michael Faraday at the Royal Institution uh, started uh, what we call science communication at, in London in 1795. And we've been carrying on that tradition. There's been four generations of wizards. Ding! that have carried this on. And we're looking for the next generation. That's why we're engaging in a contest like this. So this is a Faraday Studio, world's largest collection of science activities, according to the Librarian of Congress. And right here we are today. That's, here we are, sweet. Faraday Studio, that's where we're at anyway. And before we get started, I thought maybe I would introduce the, uh, the partner in crime in this event at Science Olympiad. You know, there was no final ceremony this year for Science Olympiad, final competition because of the disease. So we're doing this competition. And uh, let's hear a word from Jenny Kopak, who is the CEO of Science Olympiad. Everyone at Science Olympiad is so excited to be part of today's award ceremony. And we can't wait to find out who is crowned the next science star. We've been running this video competition at the Science Olympiad National Tournament since 2015. But this year, a global pandemic kept us all from attending. So instead, thanks to modern technology, and of course science, we conducted the first virtual Next Science Star competition. And the entries were amazing. We have to give a shout out to our incredible friends at the Midnight Science Club for putting on this search and to Jake and Faraday Studios for their lasting partnership. Thanks to everyone who put time and effort into their videos. We can't wait to find out who won. Back to you, Jake. Thank you, Jenny. Jenny's the queen of Science Olympiad. And you know what, there's like 8,000 teams across the United States and around the world that enter every year. That's a crazy large number of kids, 8,000 teams. And the judging, we had to get some judges. And the reason we had to get judges is because the prizes are pretty cool. Uh, the first place winner gets, are you ready for this little drum roll? First place winner gets $2,000 will be sent to their house. That's not bad, yeah. And uh, $1,500 for second place and $750 for third place. And if we have any honorable mentions, they get $250. Bucks. So that's a, that's a nice chunk of change. It'll make you do a nice project, maybe. And in order to select those, they wouldn't let me do it by myself. I'm a little ornery. So we, we put together a judging panel of scientists and astronomers and science educators, people around the country. And I have three of them right here. Our, our celebrity judge, Tamara Robertson, and head judges, Dr. Shelley Cartwright and Donald James. So I'm going to ask each one of them to tell us a little bit about themselves. Uh, Tamara, do you want to start? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Tamara Robertson. I'm a chemical and biomolecular engineer. And I get to share my love of science and engineering as a host on TV shows like Mythbusters all the time. So I have loved watching you all share your love of science. You were on Mythbusters. I am. That's where I saw you on Mythbusters. That's a Mythbusters girl. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I'm just getting quick. I, can I get your autograph later? Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. <laughs> and we have, we have some, some non-television folks, but they come from some... Oh, unknown place like NASA, I think it's called. Uh, Shelly, are you there? I sure am. Hello to everyone. I'm Shelly, and I start out as an elementary teacher and then a middle school teacher teaching science and mathematics. 
I had the opportunity to join at NASA where I would spend the next 30 years. And the big part of my job was taking the mission of NASA and helping to communicate that re research to schools, museums, and the general pu public. The capstone of my career was going off on a six month special assignment where I got to investigate analytical storytelling. And now I have come full circle. Here I am back with you, the young people, and cheering you on in this endeavor. Well, thank you, Shelley. So you were a teacher and you survived that. But then you said, did you say 30 years at NASA? Yes, 30 oh my years. Gosh. So just, I mean, a teacher can, we can actually work for NASA. I mean, a teacher can work for NASA and I suppose we could too then. Oh, absolutely. We need people who are good with communicating, understanding the science, taking the inspiration of science yeah. with heartfelt passion and sending it out to others. This lady's a communicator, isn't she? I'm telling you. That's why we got, that's why you're going to be a great, you were a great judge selection for this process. And we have another head judge with us, uh, uh, Don James. And he, look, on his shirt, it says NASA too. Another NASA person. There it is. Thank you, Jake. I am so honored to be a part of this year's Science Olympiad with the Midnight Science Club. You know, having spent 35 years at NASA, including as the head of NASA education, my passion is to inspire the generation, the next generation of scientists and engineers, especially the ones that can communicate with excitement and confidence why science is so important to the world. So great job, students, on some wonderful submissions. Well, thank you, Don. I'm very glad you liked them. Uh, it, great. We've got some other judges, too. We couldn't squeeze all of them on, but we've got some, uh, what, do we, what do we call them, spotlight on judges? So let's see some of the other judges. They had to make this decision. Hi, I'm Bonnie Murray. The videos you sent in were amazing. I really enjoyed watching them. Thank you for sharing your science communication talents with us. It was fantastic seeing all your videos come in, all the hard work and creativity that you put into them. I hope going forward that you continue to ask questions, seek answers, and never stop exploring. Hi, I'm Peg Steffen. Thank you for your enthusiasm for science and for your informative video demonstrations. I hope that you will continue to make this year a time of science learning. Wow. This, these judges are scaring me. I wouldn't want them judging my stuff. Oh my goodness, these are, this, this is a quite a remarkable group. Well, let's, you know, it's time to get started passing out some of those prizes. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to announce the third and then second and then first place. And we're going to show you a, a video of what they did after, uh, after they, we announce who they are. So you want to get started, Don? Shall we do third place now? Yes, Jake, thank stars. you. I am so excited to, to uh, show you the third place winner. I'm going to reach high into the sky for my Grab star. Grab that star. I got my star up here. Yeah. The star who is it? Who is it? Who is it? The next and science the star. And the winner is yeah. third place. Anson Tiong. Anson Tiong. Sweet. Anson. Man, the competition was fierce. I, I've got to see what Anson did. Let's play a video of this man. Third place Here's winner. Here's a bet you can try with your friend. Get a stack of coins, washers, or in this case, poker chips, and set them up on a table like so. Challenge them to try and remove the bottom chip in the stack without actually touching the stack. It may seem impossible, but with the power of science, it can be done. Observe. So how does this work? Well, in one word, inertia. Inertia is a property of matter which causes an object in motion to stay in motion, an object at rest to stay at rest, unless acted upon by an outside force. In this case, when our poker chip collided with the stack of poker chips, the stack tried to stay at rest. But, because of the force by that poker chip, and acted upon the very bottom poker chip, it caused it to go flying. Now there is a second property at work here called momentum. Momentum is the mass of an object multiplied by its velocity. And there's a property in physics called the conservation of momentum, which states that the total momentum of a system must be conserved. There's a second demonstration set up here to demonstrate that fact. Here we have a poker chip. And we're going to use this to hit the first stack. By the conservation of momentum, this final poker chip should fly off after a series of reactions. Let's take a look. Jeez, look at that. There it goes. There it goes. Thank you for watching. Give that man a hand, Anton. 
Hanson, you get our undying admiration for what you did. And you, I think Jenny from Science Olympiad will be sending you a $750 check that you, I'm sure you'll spend on pizza for all your friends or something like that. Hey, let's, let's see. I want to see who the other judges were. Do we have another spotlight for judges? Let's put I'm that Will up. Robertson. I know you had other options to do other things at this time. So I'm very pleased that you took the challenge to create your science videos, to share them with us, to show us your love for science. So congratulations in completing this task. Hello, science stars. My name is Jean Rayleigh. It has been so inspiring to see your creativity and your expressions of love for science and everything in the STEM fields. I wish each of you the very best now and in all your future endeavors. You are all science stars and excellent role models. Congratulations to the winners. All right, great. Let's give those two judges a hand. I know they're watching. Thank you. Oh, boy, you know, we've got $1,500, Shelly, to give to somebody for their efforts. Oh, we, we do, we do. And so Second let place. me reach for that star. Second place and winner. Second place is Dana Stan. Dana Stan. Dana. Dana. Oh, man. Let's see what, Dana, what Dana's uh, project was. Have you ever wondered how bicycles always stay up in the same upright position when in motion? Or how about how pilots know exactly how many degrees to turn their planes? Well, all of this can be explained through the utilization of gyroscopes. So what's so cool about a gyroscope? Well, a gyroscope is a rotating device that can be used to measure and maintain orientation. Basically, a gyroscope is a spinning thing. Just like Euler's disc, this fidget spinner, or the ball in this balloon. This system is a gyroscope because as the ball rotates, it mimics the Earth's planetary movement about the sun. So what, back to our original question, what is so cool about a gyroscope? Well, since the ball is rotating, it has angular momentum. The angular momentum of the ball depends on the mass distribution of the object and the angular velocity. So basically, the faster I move it, the more angular momentum it'll have. Since it's moving counterclockwise, the angular momentum has an upwards vector, whilst if it were moving clockwise, it would have a downwards vector. Note the orientation of the, of the ball. Even if I tilt the balloon, the ball still keeps the same plane of rotation. This is because, um, in the, from the ball's perspective, it still sees the same smooth interior of the balloon that provides us the centripetal force to keep it moving in a circle. And due to lack of external torque to change the, the ball's angular momentum, which is why angular momentum is concerned. So there you have it. That's what's so cool about a gyroscope. It's able to keep the same orientation no matter what. Well, there you go. We cut her off a little bit. That's great. She did a good job. Let's give Dana, give Dana a hand. Great. Okay. Hey, do we have any more judges we need to meet before we get on to these big prizes? Hello, I'm Jim Fitzgerald, and I'm here today to compliment you on your entries in this competition. But also, you are the future, and you are going to be providing new ideas to help us solve problems. In all the years I worked for NASA, the most fun I had was during the time I traveled around the country explaining scientific concepts to students. It has been delightful to have students explaining scientific concepts to me. You all are doing a great job and I wish you much success in all of your future endeavors. My name is Michelle Davis Jen. Thank you for your Science Communicator Star Search entries. They were fantastic. Your passion for science and communication skills is evident and admirable. You have a bright future. Well, Dana, I hope you saw that, that all those judges, quite impressive, thought you were, came in second place, and that's quite remarkable. You'll get, you'll get a check from Jenny for $1,500. That's a lot of pizza, and, a, and amen to that. Well, let's get on. No, before we do the first place, I'm getting excited. We, there were some folks that we wanted to mention them. I give them an honorable mention, can you imagine? And they did pretty doggone good, and the judges wanted to give them a little pat on the back, and we're we'll going to present them with a $250 check for an, an honorable mention. So let's see some of those. An honorable mention. Who are they, by the way? The runners up. We call them runners up. Honorable mention. Have you ever walked out on a winter day There's and one. pushed your car door and you feel a zap and then you say, ouch, and your mom responds, don't worry, it's just static electricity. Well, what is static electricity? I'll be demonstrating that with my specimen, my little sister, this balloon, and some rice cups. So I take this balloon and I rub it against my little sister's hair. We see that 
her hair attracts to this balloon. Now, take a look at this funnel and ping pong ball. Say I increase the velocity of the airstream below the ball by blowing on the funnel. The variables that are in kinetic and potential energy like air density, gravity, height, they don't change by me just blowing on the funnel. So the only thing left to change the increase in velocity is to decrease the pressure. What would this lower pressure look like under the ball? The lower pressure under the ball makes the pressure on top of it seem higher by comparison, which pushes it down and makes it unable to jump out of the funnel like you think it might. Imagine being able to make styrofoam jump with a plastic pipe. It's possible with the static charge experiment I'm about to show you. The first step is to rub a plastic pipe with wool, which makes the pipe negative. The neutral styrofoam is attracted to the now charged pipe. As they say, opposites attract. When they come into contact, the electrons in the pipe then transfer to the styrofoam, causing both to be negatively charged and to repel each other. When the repulsion force is great enough, the styrofoam jumps away from the pipe. Thank you. And that is what makes birds and airplanes fly. Thanks for watching, and next time, you can give it a try. Dahlia Carr and Anna Klinger and Ahalia Rotnavel. And I, they, they did good. I don't know, you guys had a terrible time judging. Oh my gosh, I, I want to give everybody first place. And let's move on to first, no, I've got to tease you just a little more, make a couple of announcements. Uh, we're going to have an after show next Friday. Today's Friday, isn't it? Yeah, a week from today at 3 Eastern time, 2 Central. You can join us for an after show. And we always do a midnight science club at midnight. So let's see, at 2, at, say Central time, 3, it'd be midnight in the uh, Maldives or Pakistan. So there's always, a, there's always a midnight somewhere on the planet. So we're at Pakistan time next week, we're going to have a midnight science club meeting and after show for this, where we're going to do a lot of neat science activities. So you can, you can check it out if you want to join us again. And you can join Midnight Science Club on YouTube and Instagram, and you can find us on Facebook. Matter of fact, at the end of the program today, we're going to do a little Midnight Science Club activity just, to, just for fun, after we make this final presentation. Sweet. We're going to go to our celebrity judge, Tamara. Ooh, the first place winner, $2,000. The best of the best, Tamara. Can I get a drum roll, please? Drum roll. We have and drums. Our, our grand prize for the search for the next science star first place winner goes to Jacqueline Pereira. Oh my God. Jacqueline was, you know, the judging criteria, it wasn't necessarily, Tamron, you know this, Mythbusters and all your experience, that there were lots of qualifying uh, things you guys looked at, you know. Mm -hmm. There was. There was. And so you, it maybe wasn't the loudest bang or the fastest, but you take a little, each of the judging categories, whoever had the overall highest score uh, got first place. So shall we see what she did? Do we have a sample of this first place here she comes. Uh-oh. Hi, my name is Jacqueline. And do you want to be a ninja at home? Then check this out. So what was that piece of ninja magic? That was thanks to the science of inertia. Inertia is a property of matter that keeps an object's motion unchanged. Stationary objects stay still, and moving objects keep going. This changes when an outside force is applied, such as friction, gravity, or another object. And all of this is summarized as Newton's first law of motion. So what's going on with the coins? As I use my knife to apply a force to the bottommost coin, the inertia of the other coins keeps the stack largely intact. However, you may notice that the stack's shifting around a bit. Why? Friction. The movement of the bottom coin and the impacts from the knife influence the coins above the bottommost coin, resulting in this tilted stack you see. In a frictionless world, the shape of the stack would remain virtually unchanged. So what's the secret again? Inertia, the property that keeps an object's motion unchanged unless an outside force acts upon it. Thank you for listening. Wow, let's give that girl a hand. That's great. <laughs>
You did a great job. You did a great job, young lady, and your $2,000 prize check will be coming to you from Science Olympiad shortly. Well, I want to thank everybody uh, for joining us today. This was kind of fun. And hopefully we'll be doing this every season with uh, Science Olympiad. That'd be a good thing to do. This would be kind of considered as a pilot project. And so maybe next year we'll have 3,000 entries. We never know. Might not be able to get these judges back if we have that many, but I think it was a worthy thing. And I think uh, Michael Faraday, the world's first science communicator, would be very proud of, of uh, uh, young people who competed in this year's competition. Do you judge, you, uh, three head judge, or judges, do you have anything left to say before we end this? Don or Shelly or Tamara? Maybe they didn't hear I'll me. be back, Jake. You're going to be. This is awesome. You're going to do it me again? Too. Call me back. Okay. Yeah. Never, give a, never give a guy an even break. We'll get you I back for it. sure. Now, <laughs> just, to, just to celebrate, we always, one of the traditions here at uh, Midnight Science Club, we always like to end every meeting with a bang. So I looked back in the Mr. Wizard vault. Bang. There you go. Uh, an activity he did in 1951 on NBC television. And he used an explosive gas. Uh, hydrogen. Do they use any hydrogen at NASA? I think they use a lot of it to get those rockets off the ground. So this is kind of a NASA thing. I've got my hydrogen tank over here. Do you have a picture of the ta hydrogen tank? I've got a tank of hydrogen gas and I need a couple of volunteers because you're going to have to do this because I'm so old. Uh, I want, I'll get out of the way and then you guys can run faster. Than I can. So first thing you do is put on some glasses. Now we're going we're gonna to set off some hydrogen gas. It's very explosive but I want to do it safely. So hand me a, a hydrogen tank right over there, a homemade hydrogen tank, one of those right there. Yes, ma'am. So I've got, uh, I've got a can, uh, an empty potato chip can. So I mean, you know, you've all had a, a, a can of hydrogen gas, a potato chip can. Have you ever seen a potato chip can with hydrogen gas in it? Never have? Not with hydrogen gas in it? Okay, so what's in this can right now? Look inside and report to you. What's in the can? Nothing. Nothing is. Nothing is in the can. Now, see, uh, my friend back here has to learn to think like a scientist. Is there anything in the can right now? Shelly, what's in the can? Air. Ah, air. Gotcha. Okay. There's some air in there. And we're going to fill that can. We're going to displace the air and fill it with hydrogen. And I'm going to turn this on. And then we're going to set it right here on the. And we're going to set it like this, right here. And then the very bottom of the can is a little pinhole. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right at the base of my finger, zoom in on that. You see, see that little bitty hole right there? Little bitty hole right there it is. And on the other end, we cut a hole in the lid. And what's inside of it, Mason? Air. Air. Okay, got air. So Mason, you help me. Come over here. Put your finger right there. All right. And I'm going to open this up, and we're going to fill that can with, heat, with hydrogen. Well, go ahead and take your hand, finger off for a second. We're going to flush it out. So let me flush all the air out there. So we're filling that can with hydrogen gas right now. I got to flush all the air out. Okay, now, would you put your finger over the hole? Okay, got it. Now we're going to set that down there on that. Those two pieces of wood. And the reason I put them on those two, those two pieces of wood is so some air could get in the bottom hole. And by the way, we're going to do this twice. We're going to do this first time this way. Now, I'm going to get out of the way because I'm an old man and I don't move so fast. So what we're going to do, and what is your name? Maya. I knew that, Maya. In case we have an accident, everybody say goodbye, Maya. Bye, Maya. Bye, Maya. You never know how this. Maya, you're going to light this thing. And you're going to, when he takes his finger off, you're going to take it over there and set the hydrogen on, okay? And they're just going to stand back. And Maya, you know what's going to happen? As the hydrogen goes out this way, air is going to come in the bottom. And eventually, there's going to be enough air with the hydrogen to have a combustible mixture. And I don't know what's going to happen. But I'll be on the cross room. And I'll, I know how to die on 911. So you operate that. Everybody say goodbye, Maya. Goodbye, Maya. You never know. So you get that lit. OK, get that lit. Oh, it's lit. Now you're done. Now step back. Everybody step back. Should we dim the lights or leave them on? What do you want to do? If everybody listens, sometime that can will sing a little song as the flame tries to go down inside. 
there's a tiny little flame on top of that can. And right now the hydrogen is leaking out and it's burning, an almost colorless flame, can't see it barely. But if we listen very carefully, the flame will start dancing down inside that hole. When it does, I'm getting out of here. Hydrogen is leaving, air is going in the bottom. I'll zoom in on that. I'm not getting any closer. I'm going to stand right over here behind Maya. Uh-oh. I hear something. It's starting to sing to us. Here it goes. Oh, my God. Sweet. We got to do that again. Hey. Let's do that again. Let's, uh, you guys want to do it again? We're just messing around here. Tamara, have you done this demo before? I have not. I have not done this demo before, but I'm very excited to see it. Well, that's, we're going to do it again. But this time, we're going to leave the potato chips inside the can. Now, I want everybody to think. Let's see. Before, we had air in the can, right? Yeah, yeah, you're, getting, you're finally getting that, right? There yeah, was air exactly in the can. So. Yeah, fine. It took him three times, but he got it. There's air in the can. And there's, there's the potato chips, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, there's still some air in there, too, right? I think so. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fill this up. And I've got to poke a hole in the top. You want to help me poke a hole? That's kind of dull. That's all right. You want to kind of tap on that? Let's poke a hole. There you go. Very good. So now we've got a hole. We're going to fill it up just like we did before, right? Light it. But there's going to be potato chips in there. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, maybe I do. I'm the wizard. I should probably know this. So anyway, let's have some. Oh, here it is. Let's have some hydrogen. Is it still running? Oh, I turned it off. Turn it. Can you turn that little red valve? No, the other one. A little. Just turn it straight out. There you go. There you go. So now I can put some put some hydrogen in here. Kind of hums to me. You think it'd be okay if I left a little air in there? Well, that wouldn't be good, would it? So I've got to get a lot of uh, a lot of hydrogen in there. Make sure I get the air out. Well, I think we can try it. So you want to put your finger on there? little bit more. Okay, go ahead and do it now. Okay, touch your finger off one more time. I'm just shaking it to make sure I get all the air out from between the potato chips. Okay, put your finger on there. And I'll pull that out and we'll set it down here. Okay. And I'll get out of the way because I'm so old. And do you want to light it again? You got your safety glasses on, by the way? Okay, I want you to light that before you bring it over there. There you go. See what happened. Okay, that's all standing back. Here we go. First time ever with the potato chips. Everybody predicted what they think might happen. I don't know. Ho! Oh! Ta da! We almost had a stack of potato chips left. It was supposed to leave us a stack of potato chips, but we had a little deflection there. I've done it before where we get a whole stack of potato chips. Oh, they're warm. We got some warm potato chips. Anyway, it was supposed to be a nice stack of potato chips, but that's okay. We'll keep trying until we get it. Listen, thanks for joining us at Midnight Science Club, Science Olympiad here at Faraday Studio, and we'll see you down the road. And check us out on, mid on uh, Instagram and where else are we? YouTube, Midnight Science Club, Facebook, and we do these type of activities all the time. So thanks again, judges, for spending your day with us. We're checking out.